Hey, what's going on guys? So today it's uh, another one of those late night videos where I might look really tired, so I apologize. But um, last night when I was working on the reverse camera install, I took a break and I actually found out um, the service menu uh, on the EMV unit. And basically what that can do is if you change the region correctly, you, you can install newer firmware. Um, which may let you actually have English um, for most of the navigation part of the system. Uh, you may not have English everywhere, but at least the main components, things like the navigation and stuff like that, you'll be able to use in English. Now, I went through the instructions um, based on a Russian forum called tourv.ru, and what I forgot to realize was one of these steps that they get you to select the region they obviously select North America because they put in a North American disc and then I think they modify it to put in Moscow maps or something like that. But anyway, I, I missed that step. I forgot to translate the menu and I selected North American maps as well. So now whenever the EMV unit starts up on the GPS page, it tells me it tells me that it doesn't have the correct uh, program installed, which is the firmware, and I can't do anything related to navigation. So now the workaround is basically the navigation DVD box that lives in the glove box. Um, it has a little battery inside of it that keeps all of the memory and stuff like that. So all of the firmware is stored in um, basically like a flash ROM. And that battery basically keeps that memory in state. Um, if we remove that battery even momentarily or... We deplete the battery's uh, charge that should theoretically remove that flash ROM and return it back to factory state that's what I've read anyway and again this is from what I've translated from the Russian forums there's very minimal information about this in English um, there is some in Japanese but again when you translate it back to English nothing quite makes sense okay something I just remembered I actually had the file for the North American firmware that I found um, it's it's purely just the firmware on the disk it doesn't have any of the maps I burnt that off onto a disk just before and I thought I'd try this before going ahead and desoldering the battery um, I'm fairly certain that the battery method will work I just would prefer if if I can jump through the North American firmware I know the secret I know the hidden combination in the North American firmware as well to come back to the selection screen so if i can do that that'll actually be a lot simpler um, i don't want to be messing around desoldering stuff from the dvd navigation unit they are sensitive components and i'm not the best person at soldering so I've, i'll try this method first and then we'll go ahead and look at if we need to take the battery out okay i'm just gonna chuck that in so the one that i've got is a gen 2 and 3 version 10.1 North American firmware. Let's put that in and close the thing. Let's see, is it going to detect it by itself or do I have to restart the unit? Oh, here we go. Not exactly sure how long this takes, but it's a good sign. Um, if I can get this firmware on here, then I can just chuck in my Australian maps and do the same thing, that same combination where I stuffed up the first time. And then bolt it all back together. Hey, it's in English now. Let's see what it does. Probably will complain that it doesn't have the the map. Yeah, I can hear the DVD unit trying to search for the map. So that's fine. I'm going to switch the car off and just put the Australian map in. Actually, I should have taken the thing out. Um, so I'm putting where is maps version 20 in. Let's 
see what it does. Thinking about it. Oh, there we go. So that's actually working, even though that's the North American firmware. Um, I've got the Australian maps there. Now that's not exactly um, where I am at the moment, but that's good. Um, I actually I don't recognize these names. Where are we? The other annoying thing at the moment, anyway, is it's in miles. Um, Canberra. Oh, it's like things were in Canberra. Well, that's probably the default location anyway. So that's good. That that worked. Um, what I'm going to do now, while I'm still recording, I'll just turn it off. And what I've what I've read is you do that secret combination again for the hidden menu on this language select screen. So top left, bottom left, top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. And there we go. This time it's all in um, it's all in English. So, location, oh sorry, not that, um, loading, I'm going to take some pictures of this while, while I'm working on it, just for future reference, so click on loading, that's a lot better, <laughs> now I can actually understand it, so what, from what I've read, I meant to actually pick the third last one, which is Australian, touch uh, version so let's go down to that and go ok do you load a program let's say yes please wait while the system updates And now it's install, installing the Australian uh, touch firmware. And the only thing, the other thing I'll have to do is change the, um, uh, what do you call it, the search location to Brisbane or Queensland. Um, if you recall, when I had the Japanese firmware, it was constantly searching in the background, I think because that wasn't the default location set. And I couldn't find that menu at all. Um, now this is version 20 of the firmware. I, I can get a newer version of it as well. Um, I believe I can get version 22. Not, not exactly sure what the differences are. But... Um, Agree, and we've got meters up here now, which is good. Now let's. Uh, this is all in meters. I'm just going to zoom out to 800 meters. You can see we're in Canberra. Now, uh, I guess you go into here. Um, I'm not sure where the navigation stuff all is now this might be an issue oh here we go menu volume setup destination search area this is the one we want so let's change that Queensland go okay now we're in Queensland um, 
volume there's also some setup stuff here time zones I'll just leave all that for now guidance is given at this volume that's good speaking in um, English and as you can see it's um, version R20 Now I'm not sure how to get back to the actual... Oh, there it is. So this one's navigation now. Before I used to jump through here and click the disk with the flag. Um, again, this doesn't exactly know where I am at the moment, which is fine. But um, once we go out for a drive, that should hopefully get our location again. So anyway, that all seems to work now. So that was really good that it all it took was the um, uh, American firmware, North American firmware, and I was able to jump through and come back to the Australian firmware. Yeah, I might have a play around with the version 22 of the Australian software or if there's another newer one. Um, but yeah, that's really good. We're, we've got English maps now. I might actually try and use it to navigate somewhere tomorrow and just see how it goes. Um, but as always, thanks again for watching. If there's any questions you have, um, I know I didn't get to actually test out the battery method, and I do apologize. I just I've actually been sick today, earlier today, um, so I just thought I'd finish this off quickly, get the car all back together. I'm really hoping to do the um, LSD diff, the 286 diff install tomorrow on this car. Um, so I just want to get to bed early, make sure I've got enough rest, um, so that I'm feeling a bit better tomorrow. Um, but yeah, as always, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.